This show is powered by BL3P, the lightning enabled European Bitcoin exchange. Connect the build. A dusty demon, Austin, Texas. Chess is a strategic board game played between two opponents on a square and board divided into 64 squares of alternating colors. The primary objective of chess is to checkmate your opponent's uh, king. This means putting the king in a position where it's under attack and there's no way to escape capture. The game can also end in a draw or a stalemate under certain conditions. Do you know it originated in India during the Gupta Empire? No. Would you prefer to have wheels instead of legs? <laughs> no. Have you considered getting a tattoo with the date 6th of May 2022? No. Do you use the same hair conditioner as Ben Ark? <laughs> yes. Working in tech can mean a lot of screen time. Do you balance the digital life with outdoor activities like hiking or camping? Yes. Have you lost sets in gambling at the unconfiscatable conference in Las Vegas? Yes. Do you think there are too many Bitcoin conferences these days? <laughs> yes. With your deep involvement in the Bitcoin field, are you also interested in other emerging technologies like AI, VR or quantum computing? No. In the tech world, experimenting with new gadgets and software is always a rite of passage. Have you ever uh, dabbled in building or experimenting with your own hardware or software projects outside of your work with Bitcoin uh, Lightning Network? Yes. Are you Satoshi Nakamoto? <laughs> no. Welcome to the Connected World Weekly Podcast. I'm Edward. And I'm Steph. We are ready to take you with us into the beautiful world of the Lightning Network. Enjoy, Enjoy the, the ride. ride. This is episode 97 of Connect the World, and this show is made possible by our friends from BL3P. And BL3P is the European Bitcoin Exchange located in the Netherlands. Thank you guys for helping us out with our mission. And if you also want to help us out, and of course you want that, uh, then follow us on Twitter uh, or subscribe at YouTube or go to our Telegram group if you have any questions uh, regarding the Lightning Network or anything else. And of course, a donation is always welcome. Connetti il mondo. Dusty, welcome to the show, mate. Hey, Dusty. Thank you. Nice to have you. Hey. Good, good, good to have you on. <laughs> and uh, I was, yeah, uh, thinking you, you lost sets in gambling, man. Uh, how come? Did you really gamble for sets in, in Las Vegas? Is it even possible? Or oh, it was just fiat? Was sets. You're converting it to fiat. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I did not gamble sets in Vegas. No, no. I heard sets. Uh, <laughs> Ah, that's that's unfortunate. Uh, but uh, how is how is life in Las Vegas? Was it your first time, or have you ever been there before? Oh, I've been here a bunch. Um, not <laughs> they just sound like a degenerate gambler. But no, I've been I've been here. I've been here a few times. I've been to a lot of the unconfiscatable conferences. I think three so far, something like that. Okay, cool, cool. And um, yeah, what what was the conference about this time? Let's see, it's Tone Vase Conference. So I think he just brings in like interesting people to talk about Bitcoin stuff. Uh, mostly non-technical people. It's one of the few like technical people trying to bring some of that to the conference. Okay, cool. Hey, and we asked you, have you considered getting a tattoo with the date 6th of May 2022? Do you know what, what's, yeah, is it, is it a, a, um, a worthy uh, date to you or... 6th of May. I was trying to rack my brain. I, I, I have no idea. What is it? <laughs> I saw you thinking, yeah. 
En ja, voor mij... Um, uh, I assume that this, this was the date where you got splicing done. Uh-huh. Oh, jeez, man. Oh, oh wow. No, I want to <laughs> change my answer. Can I go back? <laughs> oh, so, no, it's splicing it, day, right? Yeah, splicing, splicing day. day. You, yeah, we, we should call uh, it splicing yeah. day. That's, that's, yeah, that's great. Of course. Why, why not? <laughs> Are you still there, Justy? I'm still here. I can't see you, but, I, but I'm here. Uh, okay, oh, okay. okay. Cool. But, no, yeah. yeah, yeah. We, we put on low data mode. We will cut this out, but we will put in de- low data mode because it seems that the connection isn't that uh, great. So low, da- low okay. data mode means that we're just... Um, yeah, this, this I, I do working. this on purpose so um, yeah, yeah, Ramon working. can see it in the wave uh, form. Ah, perfect. But um, no, it's it's now uh, uh, video is still recording because everything is recording locally. Um, so um, so <laughs> good to know. So so don't take off your shirt or do anything strange. <laughs> 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 so the, the video is still recording, but we are now um, only uh, broadcasting audio. So uh, yeah, we hope that it's um, the the yeah the the, the connection will uh, improve now. Yeah, because your camera is still on, right, uh, Dusty? Yep. You you don't sure see yourself, too. but it is still on. Yeah. yeah okay, okay. Great. Great. Okay, let's continue. Perfect. Okay. Let's continue. So <laughs> I will. Um, yeah. I will. I will continue with just another question. <laughs> Ramon is crying. <laughs> hey, Dusty, you you use the same hair conditioner as Ben Ark. Have you guys met in person uh, already? Oh, I just assume so. You know, it's got to be. There's no other way. <laughs> and you also <laughs> go to the same hairdresser, right? Oh yeah, 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 <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> Perfect, man. <laughs> and I also I also saw a tweet of you. Um, would you prefer to have wheels instead of legs? Because uh, I saw a tweet of you. You were running on a treadmill, and you were like, "Why the hell do don't we humans have wheels?" Right? I mean, are are you a a, a, a singularity kind of type? Uh, are you hoping the near future will bring you wheels, or? <laughs> I mean, listen, if I was the only human with wheels, that wouldn't work. But if we all had wheels, you know, that would it'd be interesting. It's just interesting that, like, biology has these, like, valleys where it can't evolve past certain things. And the wheel is probably one of those. Like, it would make a lot of sense for animals to have wheels. But, you know, it's, it's, it's just not in the evolutionary path. And they're probably just too hard to engineer. You know, things like, where, where how do you get the blood vessels to flow through a spinning thing? You know, like, that, that's very challenging and maybe impossible. <laughs> Yeah, that might be impossible, yes. Well, uh, and d- does he, uh, you just um, say the word en- engineer. You're also an engineer, well, uh, in uh, in my opinion, because you um, uh, are a, a software and uh, hardware developer. And uh, y- you said, well, uh, that you also have some projects outside of the Bitcoin Lightning uh, um, ecosystem. So I'm very curious, what did you build for yourself or for others or uh, outside uh, the ecosystem? Oh man, what's a fun, th- lately I'm really just focused on lightning, but things in the past that I'm like, hey, I, I made my own hardware wallet. That was kind of yeah. fun years ago. Um, that was probably the big one. And I had to do one with yeah. like Bluetooth and yeah. stuff, multi-sig. It was a lot of fun. And yeah. and, so, yeah. and some st- stuff, uh, um, yeah, out of the Bitcoin space. So, <laughs> so like normal people use. Oh. <laughs> oh wait, normal people stuff out of Bitcoin. Oh man. <laughs> Um, what if I made outside of Bitcoin? I think I, I don't remember that part of my life anymore. You know, that's all in the past. <laughs> you spliced. You, 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 yeah, you, you, your brain spliced uh, a couple of years ago, right? Yep. And now, now it's like all I can think of is Bitcoin. If it's not Bitcoin related, does it even exist? I don't know. <laughs> great, no, great. I t- <laughs> hey, we, yeah, we prepared all kinds of questions for you um, uh, uh, about splicing. Uh, and yeah. All it, right. Uh, guys, this, this might be getting a bit technical, but hang in there uh, ah. because uh, you can explain it um, uh, very well, Dusty. Uh, but it has to be in the 21 minutes, man. So, um, yeah, if you're ready, we will uh, really love to enter that part. Uh, I'm ready. Let's do it. You're, do you're it. born ready, right? Okay. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Here it comes. Connect the word. 
Uh, as we talked before, uh, you're a Bitcoin Lightning developer and you are the creator of the first splicing implementation and you also maintain uh, the splicing spec uh, as of today um, uh, till, uh, till now. And uh, for our listeners who might be new to this concept, could you explain in simple terms what splicing is and how it uh, fundamentally alters the functioning of Lightning channels? All right, so the simplest way I can connect it down is... Um <laughs> splicing does this simple thing which is starts out simple which is just resizing lightning channels not everyone is aware that lightning channels have a size but they do lightning channels have a certain size and before splicing that size would set so whatever size channel you started with you just had forever you don't you, only if you wanted to change the size um you'd have to like destroy and, and open a new one and splicing allows you to on the fly um you know add more to it the analogy i heard that kind of like is if a if you're, if you're flying a plane in the sky and you decide you want bigger wings, um, you normally have to land the plane to take off the wings, put newer, bigger ones on. But with Splicing, we can just grow the wings while the plane is flying. That's the main thing. Um, and then along that's, the yeah, way, that's... it became like it started to become apparent, like, wait, this solves this, this other problem, and this other problem, this other problem, this other problem. Uh, we started out just resizing channels. And now we've solved cr things as crazy as um, the currently people that use Bitcoin today will have a Bitcoin on-chain wallet and then a Lightning wallet that are separate. Um, with splicing, we can actually combine those into one sort of unified wallet. So uh, this ends up being a big usability improvement. Um, so you could have one wallet with one balance that can both transact on-chain and on, on Lightning. Um, and that's like a huge usability improvement. And then on the back end, yeah. the way it's done is, um, tell me if you want me to stop there, I'll keep going. <laughs> No, keep going, already. please. Keep going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. So yeah. on the back end, um, the way you make a channel change in size is you need both sides of the channel. Channel lighting channels have two sides to them, two different people. You need both sides to literally sign off on any change to the channel. And that's very much true of splicing. And because we needed to have both sides sign off on the change of the channel, it introduces opportunity to say, okay, let's say, you know, this guy over here wants to splice to this guy's channel. He can also splice in stuff at the same time. And once you enable that functionality, it's it's just like a small step to allow him to do other splices at the same time. And once you get past um, this two hop, suddenly he could start to splice with somebody else over here. And then that guy could do with someone else. And all of this gets merged into one single on-chain transaction, uh, saving block space. And actually, this is a lot like a coin join. So we started out just changing lightning channel sizes and accidentally kind of solved a bunch of privacy stuff along the way <laughs> by bringing in coin joints. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's one other, yeah, go for it. It's it's crazy, man. I mean, and, and this makes the the lightning network and and channel management really dynamic, right? This really solves a lot of of, of problems uh, for that. That's the big third thing is like so, <clears throat> the experience of 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 being a lightning routing. The letting routing, you know, institution is you you try to get in the middle of the network to route the most users' transactions. The more you can route, the more valuable um, that is to you because you're getting paid to do it, and the better service you're providing to the network. The, the more well connected uh, nodes there are, the more likely payments are to work, and the lower the fees are, are going to be overall. And when you're one of these. Um, Lightning routing institutions uh, starting out, what typically happens is people will just blitz out channels. You know, like, okay, I'm going to add 10, I'm going to add 20, I'm going to add 30 lighting channels. And they're trying to guess which channel to go where will actually be useful and make money. And what usually happens is, say you did 20, you end up with uh, 18 or 19 useless channels that nobody uses, and then one really uh, yeah. valuable one. And, and yeah, this yeah. is where splicing is quite helpful to these guys because they can literally move the funds from the channels that were kind of a mistake directly into the good one. And that just improves routing across the board. Yeah, it's yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's an amazing technique. And well, uh, go all the way back because you solve a, a lot of problems now, but what did you, uh, what made you start to tackle this, this problem? Because I assume that you didn't knew all the problems you were solving, but what made you start to tackle this, this problem in the first place and, and, and build the first splicing implementation? I mean, besides uh, foolishness, <laughs> um, yeah, uh, there's this quote that I actually saw recently. It was, uh, "We do things not because they're hard, but because they thought we thought they would be easy." <laughs> um, 
I, uh, uh, I, you know, this is my first major lightning project and I knew I wanted to work on lightning and I, I was looking around for like projects to do that would be valuable to lightning. And I knew about um, splicing as a concept is quite old. And I was like, Hey, this is an obvious slam dunk. Resizing lightning channels is sort of an obvious feature. Why is nobody working on it? And now I realize nobody was working on it because it's really hard. Um, yeah, but yeah. it was, it was, it was a great blitz for me to get in. And like the amount of like, I, I came into working on a thing like, Oh, I know like how 90% of how lightning works. And then after a year, I was like, I think I know half maybe it went down uh, as I realized there was so much more uh, complexity under the hood to learn. Um, but it's really great for me as a first project because I was forced to learn so much about how lightning works. I feel like my next project, whatever that may be, will be probably a lot easier. Yeah, I, I hope it. I hope it, man. But but talking <laughs> about those challenges and and um, yeah, can you sh maybe share some of the biggest challenges you face during uh, its implementations and and uh, yeah, also how you overcome them. I mean, the biggest challenge is is just that um, all of the code base in a Lightning implementation interacts with the channel infrastructure. Um, that's like at the beating heart of the whole thing. And if you want to go in, it's like doing heart surgery and change how that works. It literally touches the entire code base. So like it got to the point where I was like, I was trying to like figure out how to learn less things. You know, I was like, I don't want to touch routing. Routing seems totally separate from splicing. And then the code interacted with routing in a way where I had to learn about routing. And that just continued for all of these rabbit holes in Lightning. So the biggest challenge was just how uh, interconnected the splicing code is. and it forces you can't really compartmentalize focus on this one thing you have to take a holistic view of the entire uh, um lightning system all at the same time that's probably the hardest part yeah, and i, I uh, remember dusty uh, that uh, we were talking uh, with in another episode uh, or also at bitcoin amsterdam uh, this year with nifty uh, about splicing in and splicing out uh, being really a game game changer and uh, well, channel management is, of course, key to uh, maintain a proper lightning node. Uh, could you compare splicing with traditional methods of managing lightning channels? And does splicing make these traditional methods um, of channel and liquidity management obsolete in, in the end? Um, so, y y yes, with, uh, with some asterisk caveats. Um, like, uh, fundamentally, yeah. splicing are tools for managing uh, your your liquidity and um try to explain it as simply as i can a lighting channel has two peers on it two people that are, are on it and there'd be a balance owned by one half and then the other half so splicing allows you to work on your half uh, of the chain and so um with yeah. splicing you can splice in and out with with those funds and as long as you're operating with your funds splicing will just definitionally be the most efficient and cheapest way to do anything uh, uh with it because say you're using uh i don't know a, a service like um i think amboss has one now there's loop or whatever um those are marketplaces where you can mm -hmm. pay somebody else to do it but then they have to do on-chain transactions under the hood anyway so even though you're not doing the on-chain transaction uh one is happening so the costs are, are always gonna be quite high so um i think your question was like is splicing more efficient and it just it just is because if something has to happen on chain, you want to reduce that footprint as much as possible. And if you look at how yeah, you would yeah. um, uh, splice in funds to a channel without splicing, you have to close the channel and then open a new one, which is uh, two transactions at least, right? So we've already got at least 50% yeah. discount. Yeah. Um, and then we also can save other, yeah. other bytes and fees as well. Yeah, and, and with the with the high uh, fees nowadays, yeah, it's uh, very indeed. welcome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And what, what do you think are the biggest challenges for the average users and developers in understanding and adapting to use uh, splicing? Well, the long term vision is that uh, users won't have to know, right? Um, and I think that one great mm -hmm. example of this is the Phoenix Wallet, um, and that one is using splicing under the hood. And when they when they integrated splicing into the app, their their uh, their fees went down by about fifty percent, which fits exactly what I was saying about the two transactions. Right, you're cutting their cost got got, got cut in half, so they could charge half as much um, to the user. And as a user, you use Phoenix Wallet, like it just works. You don't have to like know what's going on. Um, so for the users, I think that's there. For developers, um, I think 
they just we need to get uh, just more developer awareness of it. But I think it'll happen naturally because the incentive is so big, right? Like if if you're trying to compete next to Phoenix Wallet and you're trying to cut off a certain percent of the liquidity as your revenue, um, Phoenix has mm-hmm. like half the cost of you. So just naturally, it's it's going to the market forces will push it in, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And are, are there any technical limitations or constraints in the current implementation of the of the splicing spec that you're working to overcome? Yeah, there's a couple. Um, it's still an experimental, which you know, with Lightning, we keep it an experimental for for a long yeah. time before we like turn it off because it's, it's just thorough. We're just doing thorough testing of everything, trying to find every possible way that it that it it could um, go wrong, get those all, all covered. Um, one thing I'm excited about doing is, um, well, I've been working on this thing called TX Abort, which maybe is a little, I won't go into that too much because it's technical, but the reason I want that yeah. is so I can add ads to splicing. And this is like a whole totally new game changer, which is combining uh, Nifty's uh, work on liquidity ads with splicing. I mentioned mm-hmm. before, you can only splice with your part of the channel funds, not the other. But if you introduce a way to pay your channel peer to do some splicing for you over here using liquidity ads suddenly you can get both sides of it and and i think that that's going to be a whole other awesome game changer yeah, yeah. i can imagine yeah. and Absolutely. can you provide some some real world examples or use cases where splicing has proven to uh, to be particularly uh, beneficial so for for uh, for example merchants or something I mean, I already mentioned one, Phoenix, where they were able to cut their uh, fees in half. Mm -hmm. Um, That's probably the big one. Uh, The funny thing is, like, you know, Lightning is kind of private, so we don't really know how much it's getting used. Um, There is actually an on-chain footprint, and I've been debating building a tool to just see, like, how many splices are going on in the world. Um, But so I I, I don't know for certain, and I kind of can't know, but I suspect, uh, I believe... I believe Galloy does a lot of remittance payments from the U.S. to El Salvador, um, and they have. Uh, when you ever have one-way flows of funds continually on Lightning, uh, it makes mm-hmm. your routing really hard. You're constantly trying to find a way to move liquidity back the other way so everything keeps operating, and that ends up being like these guys' like biggest expense, right? And splicing won't solve their problem completely, but it gives them another tool in their arsenal that could probably reduce how much they're how much they're having to pay uh moving liquidity over to make sure the payments can work probably by significantly i don't know 30 40 percent i would guess yeah and yeah i imagine a lot of these guys are waiting for it to come out of experimental and get more of a sign off um but there have been some early adopters um that uh they, they come <laughs> i uh i hadn't i hadn't even gotten merged into core i had it in my like branch waiting to get core lightning waiting to get merged in and someone in, um, I think it was Norway, like took the code from the PR and then ran it on his own live node to like do a bunch of splices and then gave a bunch of feedback <laughs> of doing it. And that was, that was just wild. <laughs> That's a real test. In- interesting. Yeah. Hey, and on your Lightning Splice website, uh, you mentioned a new splice to close spec in the future. Can you elaborate yeah. on uh, what it, this in, entails and how it might further enhance the experience of running uh, running a node? It's another thing I'm super excited about. Um, so with, with Nifty's work on uh, dual open, we now have collaborative lightning channel opens. With splicing, we have collaboratively modifying channels while they're alive. And the one thing missing is is the splice to close. Um, so uh, this is this would just close the loop and make it so all three of these can interact with each other. So if you wanted to do a channel open and a splice at the same time, you can merge it into one transaction, but you can't merge that with a channel close. So it's kind of a natural feature to add. Um, and it enables some cool things. Like uh, if you, right now, if I, back to that example, of that guy with 20 channels, 19 of which are useless and one's great, or maybe say 18 are useless, two are great. Um, he might want to close like, three or four channels and then dump all of those sats into his good channels. Um, there's no way to do that currently and splice to close would enable that. You could just close four of them in one go, yeah, yeah, put those yeah. funds where you want it. Um, and that would just, it just seems like an obvious feature to, to, to add next. But, yeah, but this, this, this also, change. yeah, correct me if I'm wrong, but this also saves you another uh, on-chain transaction, right? Uh, 
Yes, it saves you. So splice to close into a splice in. Yes, it does. It saves you whole transaction. And even a bigger deal, uh, another big deal is channel closes take a long time. They, you know, they can take like one to two yeah, weeks yeah. or sometimes longer. Yeah. And a splice to close could could be uh, nearly instantaneous. To be a big improvement. Yeah, or or, or it, it can be way faster, but then you pay a hell lot of mon money for it, of course. So uh, that's not what you want, obviously. Yeah, to right. boost well, the, the transaction. <laughs> there's a caveat with, with, with Lightning Channel closes. Um, uh, no matter how much you pay, you have to wait until your longest HTLC is done. So yeah. regularly, yeah. a channel close can take two. This, people run into this when they like shut down their Lightning node for whatever reason. Maybe they want to set up a new one. And they try to like close other channels and turn off the machine. It's like, no, you got to run that machine for two more weeks to, to get it all out. Yeah, and yeah. These time delays are part of how the Lightning Network uh, works. So and anyway, Splice to Close could, could, could mitigate some of that. Yeah. Yeah, this this is a low time preference that you don't want, in my opinion. <laughs> hey, and what advice would you give to other Lightning developers who are looking to implement implement splicing in their platforms? What are the key challenges they should anticipate? Oh, good question. Um, well, just use Core Lightning. <laughs> I mean, right now Core Lightning has it. <laughs> so easy. <laughs> the other ones don't have it, right? So um, I, I know, like. I think that's on all of their roadmaps now, but that, that might, might take a long time. Yeah. And if you're, you know, uh, I, I am working on building guides to, to make using splicing um, easier, but I am going a little slow with it because it's still experimental, right? I don't want people to, I don't want everyone to get too recklessly jumping on it right now. Um, probably it's more for the no, ambitious course, developers at the moment. And then probably in, in you know, yeah. maybe three to six months, hand wave, making up numbers, it'll be more stable for, for, regular people and at that point i hope to have lots of lots of tutorials and stuff to, to explain it yeah because that's what i was uh, thinking about uh, next uh, how are you planning to integrate splicing into user interfaces to make it more user friendly and accessible for non-technical users because you're you were saying at uh, at, at first of all uh, eventually nobody uh, knows that that it it is there and it it, it is working that's the uh, idea. Uh, how far along are we yeah, that's the idea world, yeah. I, I think, like, as a protocol developer, I'm kind of like a developer helping other developers, right? So, like, that job of making yeah. it easier is up to the to the wall of developers. And and I view what I'm doing yeah. as a way to help them do, do their job more effectively. Um, so it's kind of like, you know, out of my hands, sort of. But I, but I definitely want to help out with that. You know, if any wall developers are looking for help doing this, I, I, I'd love to... to I'll put a call. Yeah, I don't know, so that's the first game. step now. Yeah. 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 Hey, and, and looking forward, how do you see splicing evolving and what long-term impact do you envision in, in having a, it on the, on the Lightning Network and Bitcoin scalability as a whole? I hope it's used forever, you know, but I understand if something better comes along to replace it, but I, I think it's pretty, it's pretty good where it is. Um, uh, I think it's just one of those fundamental updates to Lightning that just makes sense. It, it's really hard to to find a reason that it's not any good, right? And and it's it's um it's already mm -hmm. the the smallest package it could be. So I think it's got staying power. I think um related to this is when we get Taproot channels going um, with splicing, I'm gonna have to like redo splicing for Taproot, which um which I which will be <laughs> a, an exciting a lot of work, but but exciting. It's a lot work. of work. Yeah, and okay. I think. What's really cool hey, about and, that? Uh, yeah, go for it. For those, for those interested in learning more uh, um, about splicing and perhaps also uh, helping to develop in the future, uh, together with everybody who's working on it, uh, what resources or materials would you recommend, and uh, where do they go to 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 help out? Uh, so I, I have lightningsplice.com. I need to do a little updates, and that's a lot of date, but that's where I try to keep all of the the happenings and explanations of of, of splicing. Um, it's more of an informational website. Um, if you want to follow along with the discussion, it happens on GitHub. Um, uh, I don't remember the exact URL, but if you if you look up the uh, lightning bolt spec, uh, you probably can Google that. Um, yeah, um, that'll lead you to a GitHub page okay. where there's it, there's all the discussion about lightning spec stuff. And if you go in there and find and search through the PRs for the one about splicing, that's where all the discussion about splicing has happened. And there's there's tons of commentary and. The more eyes I can review it, the better. Um, it can be a little bit um, dense to read because it's it's all very technical. Um, but the more people of review course. it, the better. Like we're all looking for the you know what is the feedback? Tell us how we're wrong, kind of thing. 
um that's probably yeah. the main place yeah. that to, to do comments on it cool and aside supply from splicing what other scaling solutions do you think are critical or are there any critical um scaling solutions for the future development of the lightning network i think uh, uh apo or something similar is the big one um uh, just to kind of explain this at a, at a higher level, like uh, I'll try yeah. to be too technical, but uh, when we when we route <laughs> what we call a lightning payment, what we're really doing is um, we're taking the first two steps of a Bitcoin transaction and cutting off the third. So the three steps are you create a Bitcoin transaction, you sign it, and then you publish it on chain. Now, if you just do the first two, I create it and I sign it, I can give it to somebody who would then put it on chain if they wanted to. And this is in essence what a what a what a lightning payment is. Is so they're actually real Bitcoin transactions. They're just kept secret and, and hidden, kind of stored in the in, in the vault kind of thing. And anyway, well, the reason this is a problem is because we route a lot of lightning payments over the network. And every one of these payments is a new, a totally new uh, one of these Bitcoin transactions. And we end up with this huge database of all of the previous ones. We have to store every single one that ever happened. Um, and for active routing nodes, this is just this is it's a lot of overhead. And if we got this update, yeah. this very clever update to Bitcoin Core called called APO, um, it will allow us to um, throw out those transactions and and see the Lightning transaction on the chain, and then just derive the information we needed out of that. It's kind of this magic trick that just immediately eliminates yeah. a lot of yeah. bloat, and and also it, and, and it's one of those funny things, kind of like Splicing did. You solve that one problem and a bunch of other little problems around it get, get solved too, which is awesome. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And, I have number um, two if you want uh, number two. two. What secure... And uh, when uh, looking ahead, what are the main challenges in managing network congestion on the Lightning Network as user adoption increases? Because then a lot of new people are going to use it. Um, can it handle it? And what uh, uh, yeah, might be... Uh, what might be addressed at that time? Well, there's there's two kinds of congestion. I'm not sure which one you're referring to. Um, one is just mm -hmm. uh, like raw traffic numbers, like how much activity is there. Um, and the other one is, yeah. is is pending payments that that aren't closed out yet. We can talk about both. Um, the the first one, uh, um, just traffic wise, uh, it it it. Uh, I'm not a I'm not a graph theory expert, but my understanding of it is it's a problem that solves itself. Um, as the Lightning Network grows, um, we'll end up with more nodes interacting with each other, and it, uh, its ability to route stuff grows, uh, I believe, like logarithmically um, with the, the users. So I, I I don't see a problem with that, um, but the HTLC limits are are a problem, which maybe are a little technical to go into, but um, basically you can only have so many pending yeah. payments. It's about it's about 400 and change. And that number can can run out. People are working on that problem, though. Yeah, yeah. Luckily. <laughs> uh, well, I hear the TikTok, Steph. Uh, maybe uh, just one question. Um. Yeah, we can do one more. Um, what future security challenges do you foresee for the Light Network, and what kind of measures might be uh, needed to counteract these threats? <sighs> future security issues. Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, you can still answer, so of course. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> Am I out of time, or should I still answer that one? No, no, well, no. You, you can you can just you answer can still, this one. Uh, yeah, you, you, you're not saved by the bell. Uh, <laughs> no, no, absolutely <laughs> not. <laughs> uh, I think the, the the HTLC, other otherwise known as a channel jamming problem, is I don't know if it's a security one. It's more of a DDoS problem. Um, but that's a pretty pretty big one, and I think for a long time developers were hoping to find some like elegant technical solution to it, and it's looking more and more like no, we just have to build up uh, custom uh, kind of brute force solutions that we always knew were possible. They're just not as elegant, mm. um, and there's things like uh, yeah. bucketing, yeah, yeah. Uh, cert allocating certain buckets to certain people, and, and and using firewalls and white and blacklists and heuristics to 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 sort of manage that. And, that that's sort of an important one. It'd be nice to find an elegant solution to that, but it, it might just not exist. Um, and the other the other security problem is just us lighting developers can't screw up. You know, like it's 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 a lot of pressure. Um, <laughs> it's not just like I'm coding money. I'm coding like the best money in the world. And so like I really like you really don't want to have any any kind of bugs. And I think that's part of why the the development process is yeah. so slow. Is because we have 
everything is extremely over reviewed, o- over tested, etc. Yeah. Yeah, 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 but yeah. it's also a good thing, of course, and it's now a hurdle. But in the end, uh, yeah, let's hope we um, we really are building uh, for a future uh, where uh, people can use this. Uh, for the good, um, uh, thanks again. We had a lot more questions, but the bell uh, was ticking. And uh, well, yeah, uh, some other time that would would be great because this is a real interesting topic. Connect the word. Yeah, we still have one question left for you, uh, yep. Dusty. Uh, okay. You may choose one yourself because we prepared three. Uh, you can choose from Will Kastrin from Damas, Olga Yugolova from RGB, or Hendrik Skokstrom from Torque. Which one will it be? Uh, Will from Davis. Hope it's an easy one. Here it comes. Hey, this is Will from Damas. I'm curious if you think that uh, eCache solutions will take over lightning adoption as like the the, the majority of the way that people use um, L2 on Bitcoin. Oh my God, what a what a loaded question. uh, (laughs) (laughs) Will eCache dominate layer two solutions? So I think this is another way of asking like, will there be a layer three? on lightning to make light uh lightning light, layer two scale and like yeah man this is looking far in the future it's a hard <laughs> one i i think that um the the other so i think there's kind of two competing directions one is a layer three on top of lightning maybe it's eCash. um yeah the other one is something like uh multi-party channels so um to try to explain this kind of simply you can if you round up, uh, you can kind of b- vaguely say we can make a billion lightning channels per year with the current channel capacity. Um, and that's obviously not enough for 8 billion people on the planet. So people have looked at this scaling problem a- a- as like an issue, right? That's, that's probably the main scal- scaling challenge for lightning in the future world where everybody's using it. Um, and mm-hmm. there's a couple ways to solve it. One is use eCash on top of it as a layer three. Um, the other way is if you can get more than two people in a channel, then, you know, you can start multiplying those numbers. So just imagine we had 10 people per, uh, sharing a lightning channel, then we can get to 10 billion, right? And so at first you're like, oh, this is a slam dunk, right? We'll just throw a hundred people in a channel. Now we've scaled for, for tons of generations. Uh, the problem is it, it, it's an inherent trade-off. Um, the more people in a channel, the more likely it is for someone to not show up to the party, right? So if you have 10 people in a channel, yeah. One of them just like their computer turns off or, or they're not there for whatever reason. Your your only recourse is to actually close the channel. Could be a splice to close. Sure, why not? But your only chance is to close the channel <laughs> and, and then re, reopen it. And that's an on-chain transaction. And and if that happens a lot, we're actually going to waste more block space and lower the capacity of what Lightning can do. So this inherent trade-off yeah, like yeah. has not been answered. So, yeah. And if it's not yeah. answered, then I think I, I would go with the you know the layer three solution. <laughs> yeah, yeah. no it's great man yeah it's, it's interesting i never thought of it that way but it's yeah but more the more people the more hassle you you that's what what i'm thinking then right yeah the more hassle and and importantly yeah. it can result in more on-chain transactions defeating the, the whole point you know connect the word Thanks for answering it. I hope uh, Will Kasserin is also uh, yeah, glad with the answer of, and, uh, and okay <laughs> with the answer. We will ask him. <laughs> hey, um, where can people follow you, um, Dusty? Uh, I'm on GitHub. You can follow my code. It's a D D Dustin D Dustin Dustin with two D's uh, on Twitter. This one's hard to spell, but it's a uh, Dusty underscore. Damon. Importantly, it's not demon. It's it's Damon. The A and the E are opposite of what, it's what you Damon. Think. Damon. Yeah. That's what I'm going to Indeed. Good to know. Thanks again. And uh, yeah, and for, for this topic, great to uh, to talk uh, with you about it. And uh, to everybody else, thanks for listening. And thanks to all members participating in the Satoshi Radio Rings of Fire, also for liquidity. And of course, thanks to everyone helping to connect the world with us. Uh, If you like our content, then please support us in our mission. Visit our website, connecttheworld.live, where you can also donate and subscribe, like, and share our content on your favorite platform. We need you to complete a mission, connect the world, so keep those nodes running and rings burning uh, and sets flowing, of course, and see you all next week on the same Lightning Channel. Hasta luego, uh, Dusty. Au revoir, Dusty. (laughs) Thank you so much for having me. This has been great.